it sounds like, you know, because you've been in a team, you've been in there with the NOA crew for a long time, you know, and uh, having seen your performances in the past, I think you guys are, you know, very coordinated when it comes to the way how you do the moves together, not just coordinating the body when it comes to how you flow your movement, but I'm specifically talking about as a choreography, as a whole team, it looks very succinct. So what are some of the uh, things that you guys, you know, pay attention to when you guys are doing your actual training together as a team from a technical aspect? For example, do you guys focus, like, for example, you want to look in a certain way, do you guys more focus on the angles? Do you focus on the breathing? Do you focus on the tempo of the steps? What are some elements that you can share in this area? Okay, so for synchronized, synchronized showcase, uh, which a lot of b-boy, especially b-boy lack of, is because teamwork. Uh, because there's, uh, because every b-boy is very individual, which is good. But when it comes to show, individual will not be good. You know, like depending what kind of show you do, if it's a street show, doesn't matter. But it's an actual showcase for companies and stuff like that. You need to be synchronized to be look professional. So you need to take professional aspect. Like for example, count. Uh, there are a few things you need to be, uh, teach the choreography and count to a lot of type of dance. You know, people are just oh, that's basic. But for breaking, no, that's not basic. No one knows how to count. Okay. <laughs> We're pretty much like not many b boys know how to count still now still now so so we focus on count so everyone will move on the same time be in the position on the same time and we will film ourselves take a look and decide which angle that we are going to find like what's the final angle of this hand for example the top rock we pass there okay everyone's hand is different angle so Whoever choreographed that place will just decide which angle looks the best and everyone just do it in that angle. But you know, everyone's height is a little bit different, so you need to adjust a little bit. So for example, the taller people will have to kneel down a little bit more and uh, the shorter guy will have to stand up a little bit more. Yeah. That's very interesting so. because when you're talking about like, you know, um, you know, different, um, because we're all built in a different way. so. If uh, it's hard to really get the, you know, I think it's quite difficult for us to get the same angles because we have different lengths of the arms and legs. But you know the what? How you mentioned about how you can actually, you know, like ask for example the taller guy to adjust a little bit, the shorter guy to adjust a little bit to make this uh, even to make the angles look out is a very interesting concept, I think. And I think uh, from a teamwork perspective, I think it's something uh, that is very crucial, and I think it's quite interesting as well. What other elements do you guys focus on? So you talked about count, you talked about angulation. Uh, are there any other elements that you focus on when you're training for your choreography or your showcase? Training for choreography, we will just do like maybe this 30 minutes when we just run through the exactly the same routine many, many times, all out and film it and re uh, view it together and find out the problems together. If it really cannot look the same, we will just change the formation. Because sometimes changing the formation will help a lot, like because change the order of the solo, because you know the formation is all connected together, the order of the solo. I think like this one you have to explain a little bit more. I think our audience will can probably understand. So, probably understand for example, uh, there's three guy A, B, C. Uh, C, the C guy is going to solo, so he will be very tired. He need time to rest. So before that, for the intro routine, for the intro choreography, the A and B will take four A counts choreography, and they will spread out, and the C will go in. And who's the next solo? The next solo will be B guy. So the B will have to rest after the C finish and C and A will do another routine, spread out and B will go in. So you have the rest time to maximize the performance of your solo. So if that's the case, we cannot synchronize everyone. We will just change the formation and change the order of the solo. So that's one of the way to strategy. That's very interesting because like, um, you know, you mentioned about, you know, like changing formations overall, because I think, uh, I think in maybe in some other people's eyes, like changing formation affects the way how it looks overall. But I think when you talk about it in a way where yeah, it allows the individuals, you know, to have sufficient rest periods in between. So it allows them to maximize what they can do within a certain time. I think that's a very interesting concept. So is there like a... a, a uh, an, an amount of time where each person actually solos based on their maybe the level of fitness for of example or do you guys sort that on the beginning or based on you know what you guys decide how do you guys decide that 
Uh, usually the choreographer will decide, and usually the solo will be four A count. Usually, uh, for better B boys, uh, four A count is for shorter shows, but usually four A count to six A count. Usually around that because you don't want to see. You have to do routines during the solo. Some B boy will just drag their move; they didn't do on point. So, a choreographer, you need to understand each member what kind of move do they have, what kind of move will suits this music, and you just request. You can do whatever in which part, and but this beat you have to hit with this move. Mm. I want it. Yeah. So okay. they will try to make, you know, their solo around that concept or around that request that choreographer want. So the music will make sense because choreographer usually edit the music, do the mix. So they have the good idea of what picture, what kind of picture will be like, you know, during the choreography. During the show let's say, let's say if you're the choreographer at this point, you're orchestrating the whole entire picture of what the whole thing looks like, and、uh, you know, how do you like,、uh, in your opinion, how do you decide what makes an impact, or how do you decide, like, what moves in this case will look good for the specific like beat, for example? Like, how do you、um, create that? That's my question. Okay, so. Usually,、uh, usually for a performance, you need to have a climax and you know growth and go down. So what I like to do,、uh, my style is that I will have a huge impact in the beginning of the show, and later on I will have a style like you will drop down, and at the end I will have another impact, like a big move at the end of the show. So this way I know who can do. Tricks. Who can do power moves? Who can do like better big move, like very stage-like move? I will place them in the beginning and the end. In the middle, I will fill up with different kind of contact, like maybe footwork. Some guys very good top rock. Some guys very good this type of style, and I will fitting and choose the music to go with it. So, so the show looks up and down, not just like oh so high ball. It's getting bored, you know. It sounds really interesting because it's like,、uh, or it's kind of like you, you're you're actually creating or crafting a piece of very good presentation, you know, like that that actually goes that has a you know different levels of、um, you know transitions in between that makes it more interesting for the audience. It's kind of like writing a movie in a way. Would you agree? Yes, yes. It's very very interesting. So now I know that you you、uh, we discussed about this、uh, before already in terms of movements, but I think、uh, what is interesting is that、uh, you, you you also mentioned about you know the importance of practice and different strategies in this area. So when it comes to the time when you were representing Canada to take part in the Battle of the Year,、yeah. what was that experience like? And did any of the so and who was in charge of the choreography for that one? Okay, so、uh, one of my.、Uh... Like elders member、uh, Jerry, Jerry he was in charge of that choreography during that time, and、uh, and actually we were very excited to represent Canada, and、um, we went on stage. We didn't do our best because we were very nervous too.、Uh, everyone was so good. Like we got place seven out of. Twenty country, twenty something country. I forgot. I forgot how many. But、um, we learned a lot, and、um, yeah, actually, it was just so much things going on in our brain. So we came back home and just train more. <laughs> it was too much. It was too much. Yeah. So, but at that time, like when you're training for the the battle of the year contest, like did you guys? Um, you know, change、uh, your your practice, the way how you practice differently for that one specifically, or or no? Yes, yes. We actually take it very seriously, and we change the choreography like few times compared to the original one. We want to try to make an impact. But at the end, after the show, we should try to be ourselves. We should just just try to be ourselves, like not trying to impress anyone. But you know, that was our first time on international stage, so we definitely learn a lot of lesson. Not what not to do, what to do, and now I will just you know do way better because I have experience now. So yes, is、uh, definitely agree with you because I think the experience part is quite important. You know, given that it's the first time on stage, you can get very nervous. You know, but hey, but having represented Canada, you know, congratulations again. That was fantastic. Yay! <laughs> 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 I like the section. I mean, if、uh, any of the audience haven't seen it, you guys gotta go check it out. The Battle of the Year clip. I mean,、uh, there's a section where you guys did, and you guys look like you're playing hockey, kind of. 
Oh yes, yes. You yes, know, yes. those really really creative. <laughs> yeah, we incorporate try to you know like、uh, include Canadian culture. Yeah, fantastic. And what was your favorite moment from that event? From that event, favorite moment was actually. It it wasn't the battle itself. Actually, it was like the experience of traveling together with the crew, because you know everyone gets old. You don't get that now. Like that was just it's just what we mentioned it like our crew name now and ever. Sometimes like people hating each other. Hey, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you? But if you think about it, time is gonna pass by. We're gonna get old. We're gonna have a responsibility. So these kind of time. Like traveling together, without any responsibility, like no kids, not married, no one's married, you know that's very rare. So that's it's kind of like a you know now or never thing. It's now or never. You were together. That was the best time. Like traveling is with the crew, chilling, hanging out, talk, chat about what happened next year, what what are we going to do when we get back home, what we should do, and you know, trying to work on the same. Like you know, same target, same uh, same mentality, same same goal. Trying to work hard towards the same goal all together. That moment was very very good. Like excellent. I treasure、yeah. that it's moment. Kind of, it's kind of like tre- you know, like really tre- treasuring that moment together. You know, the the, the presence of it. And、uh, so, because I know I know that like、uh, you you went to you traveled to Japan now. It's correct, and you're residing there now、uh, with your family. And uh, in terms of uh, like Japan, uh, uh, what is the Breakdance culture like over there, and in terms of the movements they do, how does it differ from what you guys are doing at the time from your country? Okay, so Japan,、uh, they fo- focus on more technical aspect、uh, because of their culture. There are more in Japan. There are more majime. In Japan, it's like called majime. It's like very serious about whatever they want to do. They will just,、um, yeah, their blow ups and power moves, their hard tricks, dynamics. A way higher level compared to any other country, and same same level is Korea, and、uh, it, of course they are good and bad. But m- average dancer, their skill level was way higher, like very very high, in Japan, and their dancing was way bigger because their population is way condensed.、Hmm. Just Tokyo by itself is four thousand b boys. Oh, that's a lot. Vancouver, just Tokyo.、Yeah. Vancouver, a <laughs> hundred. Oh, Maybe,、okay. yeah. So that's a big difference, right? Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of the technicality aspect overall, you mentioned it more technical, and I think Japan is very detailed when it comes to you know designing different things overall in general. And uh, so um, in that aspect, like, what do you notice that they put more emphasis on when they're training? Is it more on the every single aspect of the detail of how they, you know, like let's say if they're doing a power move, you know, the way how they shift their hands and legs, the way how they move their head in between. What are some of the examples that you notice that they do?、Uh, they will train every angle very precisely, like they want to look the same. Basically, they want to look the same.、Uh, exactly North- identical. <laughs> yeah, they want to. They want to look identical. So,、uh, they think identical is the correct way. Mm. With the team, so they will try to be. If if the student break, you will just see like the teacher's shadow. Ah,、uh, okay. They have their uh in in back in、uh, Canada or North America. Oh, if you can windmill, yeah,、oh, yeah, that's fine. You know, oh,、uh, your leg is a little bit different. Yeah, that's cool. You know, it, <laughs> that's your style, right? So, but in Japan, it's like, oh no, no, your leg gotta be this way, and you know, you gotta look like this. So students want to look like that too. So, in terms of that, everyone will break very similar, very identical. But when Japanese dancers, b boys, they travel to other country, they stand out because、mm. they break Japanese. But、yeah. when they come back to Japan, they don't stand out because everyone break exactly the same.、Mm. Exactly. So it's like identical movements in every segment of detail. Yes, yes. So depending on which teacher they learn from, right? So. Okay. So in your opinion, then in that case, now that you've、uh, traveled to Japan, do you think their style somehow influenced the way of what you do in terms of your style when it comes to the way how you flow your movements? Uh, in the beginning, definitely, I want to do more dynamics move to impress. But at the end, after a few battles, I'm like, why should I do that? Because I'll just be myself. 
even though they don't understand my movement, but I feel the most comfortable moving like this. I feel more more confidence, and this is actually my style. I should be loyal to my own style, not changing style because the environment change. But that's not me, right? I should just you know, I cannot change what other people think, but I can change like you know, I should be loyal to whatever I think is the most you know comfortable or the movement I think is the most coolest that represents me. Represent my background, so. Right. Yeah, I mean that's an interesting one as well because mention of a movement that's more comfortable because I think um, you know different people have different ways of describing and uh, you know movements in different ways as well. I think yeah,、uh, for a lot of people like you know we can't optimize like movement in a certain way because everybody has a different way they move. You know, legs are different, our body is different, the way how it represents ourselves is different. So I think、uh, in that aspect, you've given us a very good idea about the importance of you know learning what's best for you, right? Yeah. yeah, everyone's different. I should just represent myself. So instead、yeah. of trying to match the dynamic level, yeah, yeah. So that's what's good. What's fun about breaking is that there's so many different kind of style, and you just be yourself. So. And then now, if you were to like,、um, like go back in time and maybe give yourself a piece of advice, because now that you have much more experience as an instructor, as a、uh, a breaking coach, and also. Um, and also, with your experience, you've led the crew, or you've been with the crew for so many years. Like, what would you be like an advice that you would give yourself?、Mm. Uh, you know, less serious because I was always serious about everything. So, just chill. You know, relax. Don't be too serious about you know things. You know, enjoy, and things will come. Like. You know, it would be smooth. Just being happy, right? You know about yeah, about being you、happy. know being yeah being happy about what you're doing and uh, and uh, you know expand from that. That's an interesting one. Cool. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time today. I think you've given us a very good、um, you know overall like、uh, you know what your life story is like back in the day. You know how you got from one area to the other, and.、Um, I think、uh, I think you also given us a, a lot about you know the important about importance about different technical aspects you know when it's things that you pay attention to things that you notice other people pay attention to when they're training their movements as well for example the angles right you mentioned about in the choreography sense the positioning overall right so this is something that I think、uh, you know movement specialists and movement artists you know, have the tendency to to use all the time in order to help them proprioceptively know where everything is right because or else how do you know that this much of the finger is this much or this much of the Hand is this much, so it's very precise in that sense. Now,、um, now moving on to the next part, because I think it will be good also for the for the audience to understand a little bit more about what you do and what you pay attention to when you're doing these moves as well. Is is to、uh, you know, have you do some demonstration for us if that's possible? So,、uh, do you think you do some demonstration for us today? Yeah, sure. Cool. Thank you. All right. <laughs> this move like this. Ooh, oh, that was nice. <laughs> So、okay. Yeah. What is this move called? It's your own move, right? Yeah, it's kind of like、uh, my own move. Uh, uh, wind up, like I don't know, baby freeze, wind up track or something. I guess there's no name for it. I suck with names, man. <laughs> you can make one up right now. It's kind of like a wind up tiptoe、yeah, kind of thing. <laughs> so, because that was kind of quick. Do you think you do it again one more time? Yeah. Okay, so do one demonstration for us as a bit,、uh, just like the, the same speed, and then you can start breaking it down. Okay, so、yep. from here and okay, good. So why don't you break the movement down a little bit more, and how people can actually, you know, train to do that? Okay, so basically, first of all, you need to know how to do the basic,、uh, the baby freeze. So baby freeze,、uh, you actually don't really need.、Um, You don't need really need a strength. You just need to control the balance, and it's like a seesaw. So you use your bone, your elbow here, to stab the side of your hip like this, and the other side will balance.、Um, uh, you put your knee weight on the top, and you put your head down, and keep your hand ninety degree from the floor. Just go down like this. That's the baby freeze. And from here, you use your head,、uh, leg. To rewind like this, so when you rewind, you need to push up. Okay, so when you push up, it goes. If I do it slowly, it looks like this, and 
and I look forward. So again, like here, you will wind up, push, and I face the other direction. So if you do it fast, it looks like you're turning, but actually you only turn half, 180. And do you land on your opposite, like, cause right now you're winding up and then your right leg was on, you know, closer to my face, like in this case, and then you switched up to the other side. And you, when you land, like, um, which leg is going to be on the top of which one? So the left leg will be on the top because you wind with your right, right? So you wind yeah. with your right like this and on the top. So, so it's kind of like a, yeah, so it's kind of like a big uh, wind up step and then you, you switch and turn and you land with the one leg. So there, sometimes uh, there's another way to understand the move better that you do opposite. So uh, sometimes like it's harder to do the normal way and it's easier to do the opposite way. For example, mm -hmm. if you, for example, if you stand up, for people who have a leg injury, stand up is very hard. But sitting down is easier. So you practice sitting down. So same thing with pull up, the negative. You cannot do, you cannot do a proper pull up. You just start from this position and negative slowly to build up the muscle, right? Same thing with uh, movement from here, from this position, you want to do the negative in pull up. So you turn. I was like reversing it. Yes. And you put your hand down and you step and you freeze. So this is a lot easier than flying up because flying up, you go against the, the uh, gravity. Okay. So in a way, you, you kinda like, it, it's kind of like rewinding a tape, doing yeah. backwards and reverse engineering. It's like uh, the VSL. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting. That was a really good one, VHS, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So I think what would be, um, I also want to, one question I asked was, you know, because you mentioned about winding up and you changed the movement. And then when you're turning then in that case, what are the elements that you focus on? Uh, you, yeah. Uh, you mean when you wind up? After winding up, because you mentioned about winding up, you already wind up. So what is the next aspect of things that you focus on? Uh, you things focus on, you need to land on your right foot. So you need to put all your weight on your right foot. So you need to, tuck your chin in and forward. Or otherwise your, your body is gonna fall in this position. You're gonna fall down, right? So yeah. when you go up, because you need to fall into this position. So you, your body needs to go like this. You need to tuck in. Oh, so it's kind of like a flex position. You have to go there. So then you're leading your body in that specific uh, direction, so to speak, so you don't fall over. So when you go up, you need to your, your mind need to think about that position, the final position that you want to do. And what's the most important to balance? The most important to balance is keep your chest close to your knee and tuck your chin in. Okay. So this way your upper body will get smaller and you can have all your weight on your one leg. Mm, okay. So it's like a reducing the lever arm in a way. So you make it the movement like in that way a little bit smaller so it's easier to control. Small, small. Yeah, basically make your body smaller so it's easier to control. It's almost like, you know, when you're doing a move, you kind of like from big to small, kind of like that. But you yeah, close it's, it's way. Yeah, poke what your are some of the um, pot practice things they can also practice as well, aside from the baby phrase, the wind uh, up. If you want to break this down further. Uh, so, so to get ready for this movement, of course, the baby freeze, you need to be able to hold it easily. Uh, from baby freeze, you need to go up. So you need to push up from baby freeze. So from here, to here, here, to here. Mm. So this way you have, uh, you know, you have enough strength to push up your body. And okay. later on, you just have to wind up your leg and stand on the last position. Yeah. Is there a way to practice the wind up, like on ground? Uh, wind up on the ground, hmm. That's a very interesting question because if I say you practice like this, first of all, it looks very bad. <laughs> okay. And second, it's not gonna work. <laughs> no difference. So I say the best way to wind up practice is actually do it in that position because you know if you do it in a handstand headstand position or lying down, it's different because your yeah. hand is not in the same position, your muscles exactly. yeah. different. 
So you need to in this position to practice your wind up. So from here and to here, here to here. Hmm. And I think the best way to practice is that slow down everything. If you can do slow down, you can speed up. Okay. So it's always no. about the control first. I totally agree. Yeah. Don't rush. A lot of people be like, hey, teacher, teacher G, I can do this. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm trying to do it slower. So they'll be like, slow. I want you to go as slow as possible. Like this. So this way you practice every single detail muscle. Like your little muscle will be trained and it will be very easy for you. Do you think practicing the end, the last finishing position also helps as well in terms of how to feel what it feels like to be, to finish in that position? You know, the one uh, way you talked about bending and also holding in one leg. Yeah, well. bending, uh, we, yeah, of course it will help. Just like this. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it seems like you sit there the whole day. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's some good balance there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's core muscle. It's a basic of footwork. Forward, mm -hmm. you need to stand, you know, you need to be able to bottom up your foot. So, yeah. All right, excellent. Thank you very much for sharing, uh, doing some demonstrations for us and telling us about some of the technical aspects that we can focus on in order to produce these movements. I think, uh, you know, we got a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, information from you today, I think, in, in, in a really good way because, you you know, you told us about, you know, the, a little bit more about the, the breaking culture, a little bit how you got started. And also at the same time, you also give us some very, I think, important information about, you know, in, like practicing those little baby steps, you know, and also which makes part practice very important and also in the essence to control first rather than just jumping straight to the movement which i think is very important i won't forget to mention also about the importance of, you know training in front of a mirror as well because you know where your position is right <laughs> yeah all right well i think that's all the time we have today for uh for our show thank you very much again b-boy g for coming up and uh it's been fantastic to have you and we'd love to have you back again in the future and i hope everybody enjoyed the show and have a lovely day yeah you too thank you thank you Peace. Bye-bye. If you like our videos, please be sure to like and subscribe for more.